Hi, welcome back to b and &E Productions. I'm Ethan, and today's video is going to be about mock suppressors. So mock suppressors um, in this video are just going to consist of the uh, mock suppressors that do not include tracer units or like the hop-up units that increase your FPS or uh, distance. So just uh, when you're watching this video, um, just keep those things in mind. And also uh, watch this with a grain of salt because um, a lot of this is personal preference and uh, personal experiences. So it kind of depends what you're um, trying to do or what you're trying to like uh, build your gun off of. So, um, and I'll go into further things in the video, but just keep those things in mind. So first off, I use mock suppressors on rifles and pistols. So I have an Angel Custom one here on my Crytek CRB. And uh, aesthetically, I love the look of mock suppressors. But one thing you do have to keep in mind is that they increase the overall length of your rifle. So normally this is a 10 and a half inch barrel. And with the added um, mock suppressor, that increases your overall length by maybe, depending on the mock suppressor you go with, but it can increase it from maybe like three to six inches. So that's quite a lot of extra length that has no function. So you gotta think look over function. What actually works and what's just for looks. Now I will admit most of Aerosoft is just for looks, but uh, some, sometimes you really have to like look at the reality of things. And another thing too is depending on the um, suppressor model, and uh, the materials you use that can really make uh, a difference on the balance of your gun. So like I can one hand this pretty easily, but say this was an even heavier mock suppressor, then you'll, you can start noticing like over, like say you're trying to uh, cover a sector or you're holding position for a while, but you need your gun up. Over time, you'll just start drooping with that strain. And depending how you like set up your rifle, um, you can get a lot of like forearm strain too. Like this is a uh, angled foregrip, uh, but depending if you use a vertical one or not, it kind of just depends on your body mechanics and uh, like you know what's comfortable for you. It can really make a difference on how long you can hold your rifle comfortably. And so speaking of adding length to your uh, gun, that also applies to handguns. So uh, 1911 Tech, I've had this gun for a very long time. And for a while, this was the only like uh, primary airsoft gun that I had. And the uh, suppressor that I have on my Crytac, that is what was here. Uh, now, this is another um, Angel Custom one that I picked up. I've been using that on my CZ. Excuse me, but for the purpose of this video, I just want to show you a couple things of issues that I was running into with uh, mock suppressors. So, again, it adds length. So, say I'm in a CQB environment. Now this is a mock suppressor, not a tracer unit. So tracer units, it actually serves a purpose and they actually like can help you out. But just mock suppressors in general, you're just adding length for look. So what normally would only come out to here, I have all this, I got it, like I said, I got another hand for that pistol. So you really just gotta think about like, if I'm in CQB and I need to be like pushing and stuff, this will get in the way, just flat out. Now, when I was using this, I was mainly, mainly outdoors, so it didn't really matter so much. It was more so just to look cool. But one thing I was running into is with this one, not so much, but with my Angel, the other Angel Custom one, I was having issues when I would fire. The slide would just lock up. So as you can tell, it's not cycling all the way forward, so it wouldn't uh, pick up that next BB, and it would just get stuck like this. So like easily, you know, like just shake it and it'll go forward. But say you're in the middle of a firefight and you're trying to engage and your slide just locks up just like just like this, not touching it, not doing anything to this. It just locks up on you. Now I've tried cleaning all of this material and stuff, but without, but with the mock suppressor on there, I've just noticed that this just happens. Um, so yeah, I'm just shaking it forward, uh, fixes it, but if you're in the middle of a firefight and that extra second really counts, like it can be a detriment. And also one thing I noticed too is when I would fire and say it did work fine, the s cycling would be a lot slower. So it'd be about double the amount of time it would normally take. So um, yeah, just added time between the amount of engagements. And like, like I said, I'm not even doing anything and this is happening. 
And I've seen this on quite a few guns with mark suppressors, like gas guns at least. So just something to keep in mind um, when, when you're uh, choosing these. And another thing that kind of gets in the way is holster compatibility. Not a lot of holsters are compatible with suppressors. Kydex wise, I think there's a couple on the market that um, accommodate these, but for the most part, uh, like Kydex holsters, like my G code won't fit this, and uh, like the uh, ASG one for the CZP09, and like anything like those, it, they simply just don't work. Um, now, I have seen people use soft shell and like nylon holsters, and I, I did try that for a bit, but I noticed when I was trying to. Um, pull my gun out, it would get caught on the suppressor when it like uh, gets to the body of the suppressor and it just wouldn't work. So um, like I said, when I was running this primary, this wasn't an issue for me, but as I'm like transitioning to a rifle or trying to transition to my sidearm, it just simply wouldn't work um, for my uses. Now, like I said, this is a lot of this is a personal preference and personal experiences, but those are maybe just some reasons why you should think about uh, mock suppressors and stuff. Pistols, unless you're running a tracer unit or a hop-up unit, I, I wouldn't recommend using them. Now, if you're using pistol standalone and you're like CPB or maybe longer distances, yeah, for the looks and uh, what you want to do, looks cool. Um, but like I said, if you're running a rifle or something else as a primary and trying to transition, I wouldn't recommend it. Now moving back to rifles. Rifles, I think, um, are very situational. Like if you're in CQB, kind of like with shorter guns or moving into urban environments, um, th there's potential for difficulty there. But if you know your rifle and how uh, you move and like what you can and cannot do with that added length, you know, knock yourself out. Like personally, I, like I said, I love the look of a mock suppressor so i'm probably going to keep running them on my rifles pistols though probably a no-go but if you kind of want those um shorter guns but still have suppressors on them you can do maybe the uh, new elite force mp5 sd that's already got it built in so it's already built in it's already um like that uh rail piece kind of already goes along the length of it so that that's a good option there if you still want the suppressor look you could also do the suppressors that go inside the rails. Um, so, like, this is covered up, and maybe you'll only see that. Like the Honey Badger, for example, or um, those guns that are kind of built to replicate that where it's uh, hidden. Um, those are a great option, too. So, like I said, uh, a lot of personal preference and kind of how you run things. I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't run them, but... Um, just giving you some factors just to think about. So thank you for watching. Um, if there's anything else you want to see me cover, please let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. Like I said, you guys are awesome. This community has been growing uh, ever so steadily. So thank you so much for that. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a great rest of your day.